Hello, Devi here, and welcome to this yin yang yoga sequence where we'll start standing up with some yang warm ups, the golden seed sequence, and then move to the floor for some nice yin and stretchy stuff that's just going to feel real good. So start standing up, and I'll see you there in just a second. <music> Start standing with the legs somewhat wide, not super wide like Warrior Two, but just medium wide for our Golden Seed sequence and warm ups. And here we'll begin with the hands on the hips coming right into some side lunges. And as we come into one side and then the other, there's not any particular way that your toes need to point. Just see where the ankles and feet want to go to accommodate what feels like starting to get some juice in the legs and in the thighs as you move side to side. And you can begin to challenge yourself and come a little bit deeper, which might involve dipping the torso forward just to balance yourself out to get that deeper squat. And it might involve letting the heels lift, so do as you wish with the feet, just juicing up the thighs here. If you want to start to bring the hands to the ground and come even deeper, please go for it. Or if you want to stay up higher, you might get a little more feeling of core strength and a little more feeling of strengthening in the thighs as well. Play around with this a few more times side to side, side lunges. Feel free to drop it way down if that feels good to you. All right, and bring it back up to the center now. Take your hands up onto your hips, standing upright. And now taking your arms into eagle arms, right elbow underneath the left. If this is not a position that works for your body, then do the hug. Hands come behind the shoulder blade, giving yourself a nice big wide hug. Bend into your knees, into your goddess squat, and make circles clockwise with your elbows. You can start out with small circles and make it like a spiral so the circles get bigger. And as they get bigger, you can feel some forward bending and some back bending and a little bit of twisting. One more circle. Good. And now taking these elbows in toward the belly in a crunch, rounding the upper back as you do this. And now lift the elbows up, come into a back bend. And releasing back to neutral, undo the arms and come right up into star pose. Spread the arms out. Take a nice big breath in as you look up. And now exhale, other way, left arm under the right. Eagle arms or the hug. And now counterclockwise with your elbows. Start with your small circle. And let it get bigger as you will. Maybe coming into the forward bend, the side bend, the back bend. Each time you come around. Great. And bring it one more time all the way around. And then back to neutral, back to the middle. Crunch it in, elbows toward the belly. And finding that little back bend, lifting the gaze. Bring it back to the center, spread the arms out, open it all up into your star shape, inhale and exhale. Let your hands come behind your back, clasp your hands, open up your chest, lift your gaze, exhale, hinge forward at the hips, toes can point forward or in or out. Again, what feels best on your legs? It's different for everyone. Release the hands to the ground. And hanging here, enjoying your elephant pose, wide leg forward bend. You might hold opposite elbows. You might be someone whose head comes to the ground easily here. And now the elephant twist, left hand on the center of the ground under your heart, right arm twists up. Turn your gaze up. And come back down to the center and change to the other side. And you're squeezing your shoulder blades together and bring it back down. And now 
This version of elephant pose where the hand comes farther over toward the opposite foot may or may not be in your range of motion. So you decide centered or over or some of you on the outside of the foot or the calf if you like. And again, that right arm up. So there might be a little more forward bend happening here in this version in this arm variation. Good, bring it back down, change to the second side. Excellent, bring it back down. And now your eagle arms. So you're gonna take your right elbow under your left into your eagle arms here. I'm just showing you as we come down into the forward bend. And now let your eagle arms hang like your elephant trunk as you come side to side. And now as you, can, as you come side to side, let your knees bend. Good. And releasing back to center, let go of the arms, spread them out to the sides, bring your torso to horizontal. Inhale and exhale, left arm under the right, same thing, side to side swaying. You can let your head go as much as feels good. Let the arms hang. Might feel good to rock forward and back a little. Good, and release your arms down now. Take your hands up onto your hips and come all the way up to standing, moving into golden seed sequence. So the feet again are about the same, not super wide stance. It's called a horse stance sometimes. It's just wider than the hips or wider than shoulders. And you can play around with the exact width so that it feels good for your body. Hands begin here at the lower dantian, at the low belly, and taking a breath here. And feeling the energy against the hands, mirroring the energy inside the body with these movements. Inhaling, the arms come into this big circular movement. So palms face up as you gather heaven chi from above. And as you exhale, take it down. So heaven chi can also just be thought of as universe chi or the sun energy. You're drawing the sun energy down to the heart, pressing it out to either side. Palms are open into this open horse position and right into that elephant pose. And you can see I shifted my feet because I'm letting my hips decide what feels good and the feet move as just sort of an effect of that. So you will do the same with your hips and it might be different than mine. Some people are toes out here, toes farther in, totally up to you. Come into your elephant twist, left hand on the ground, right arm up and back down to center. Elephant twist, second side. Good, come back down to the center. And now this circular movement of the hands, just a couple inches above the earth, gathering a ball of chi, a ball of yin chi from the earth. Bend your knees as you pull this heavy ball of chi up. Keep it close to your body. Move it up through the heart. Turn the hands at the shoulder level and press this ball of chi up now over your head as you straighten your legs. And exhale, bring the arms forward and into drinking bird pose. So here we have a forward bend with a straight spine. The arms are straight and there's a sense that you're squeezing the spine, you're squeezing the shoulder blades together and you're squeezing into a back bend. Good, right into horse pose again. So toes can turn out as you wish to get this wide squat. And this time the arms are straight up over the head. Good, releasing back down eight, second time into the drinking bird pose. Squeeze the shoulder blades, your sitting bones reaching back, your skull, uh, crown of the skull reaching forward and release your hands to the ground now. And now we soften the spine, now we get to relax. Take these hands and send them back through the legs, farther back than the feet themselves, if that's in your range of motion. And the backs of the hands rest on the ground as you bend your knees and start to drag these hands forward. Drag them along the ground and slowly let them come off the ground now with a rounded spine. So you're unfurling, lifting up slowly, arms over the head, and now your palms face down guiding the chi down through the head, through the face, the throat, 
through the heart and all the way to the belly. And here we are where we began. So that's our first round of the golden seed. Let's do it a few more times. Inhale, circle and gather up over the head and exhale, bring it down to the heart level, press it out, open horse. Bend forward, elephant pose. Elephant twists to the first side. Your choice if that bottom hand is reaching farther over or more centered, take it back down. And second side, elephant twist. Bring it back down and gather the chi from the earth, pulling it up, slowly lifting through the belly, through the heart. Turn the hands at shoulder level and begin to press it up and straighten your legs. And exhale, drinking bird, take it forward, back and up, squeeze the shoulder blades, stick the sitting bones back. And coming into the horse pose with the arms straight up, nice deep squat, challenge yourself if you can. And exhale, take it down into the drinking bird for the second time. And now release it down, relax the spine, hands to the ground, relax the head. Send the hands farther back and through, hands, backs of the hands on the ground and drag. Bend your knees and round up. If you're new to this, watch this rounding movement. So the arms are up near the ears and I'm rounding this whole back side of the body, the yang side of the body. Good, release the hands down slowly. They're guiding the chi down through this whole central channel. All right, two more times, picking up the pace a little bit now, inhaling the arms over the head, gathering, bringing it down into open horse, bending forward into elephant pose, and elephant twist, inhale, reach, squeeze the spine, exhale down, and second side, squeeze the spine, exhale back down to the center, Hands are above the earth and pulling that ball of chi out of the earth. Hold it close to the body and lift it up shoulder level. Press it up over the head, straighten the legs and bring the hands forward and back into the drinking bird pose. Keep your spine long, chest open and swing the arms forward again. Your toes turning out as you wish for this horse pose with the arms up over the head back into your drinking bird pose second time and release the hands down onto the ground. Drag the backs of the hands along the ground and round up through the lower back, middle back, upper back standing and slowly settle the chi down through the head, through the spine, one vertebra at a time, ending up here at the belly at the sacrum level. Great, one more time, here we go. Inhale, exhale and open it out. And elephant pose, bring it on down. Elephant twist, right arm up, back down. Elephant twist, second side, and bring it back down. Gather the chi, pull it up out of the earth. Bend the knees to start to help you lift this heavy ball, turn the hands, and now, oh, press it up. Good, sweep the arms forward and back into drinking bird. Let the toes point wherever they need to for comfort and horse pose. Again, toes and feet can shift. Nice deep squat and bring it forward into drinking bird last time. And the hands now relax to the ground, chin toward the chest. Back to the hands on the ground, dragging forward till your, till your uh, arms come up next to the ears, all the way up to standing and slowly settle the chi down through the head, through the spine, the throat, the heart, the belly. Close the eyes, three breaths here, standing in a comfortable place. You can narrow the legs if you like. And coming down now, hands on the hips into an elephant pose. 
and dropping right down into frog pose. So bend your knees, knees on the ground. And frog comes in a few variations. So you might know your favorite frog. And the variations I'll show you at this 45 degree angle because that is where you'll probably be able to see the best. You can do somewhat wide knees, child's pose. And some people will call this variation of frog the tadpole, but it's really all the same pose. We're going for a stretch of the inner thighs, the inner groins. And you might want your knees wider than that, like so, if you're not getting enough, or if you just want your pelvis at a different angle. You can try it starting out with your hips more forward and then start to push back and settle back and see what feels good. I'm on my elbows. Some people like to be resting with their head on the hands or resting the whole chest and torso on a bolster. So feel free to use your props as you like. And finally, some people like to open the feet up and that gives them a better sensation in the inner thighs. Your hips might be higher up and that's totally fine. And your hips are not necessarily trying to be level with the knees. They can be farther back or farther forward. More common is to have them farther back. So go ahead and enjoy this frog pose. And slowly releasing frog, coming up and make your way to a sitting position with your right leg in front and your left leg bent for half butterfly pose. Or feel free to take your variations if you're familiar with the half shoelace or the half frog versions of this. And relaxing forward over this leg, hands on the shin, the ankle, the floor whatever works. If you like to use a strap, please feel free. And here, targeting the back of the leg for your sensation. So pillows, bolster, or blocks underneath your seat might help with that quite a bit. Use props as you like. And slowly release, change sides. Left leg forward, right leg bent.
All right, slowly release, coming up, please, and making your way to Seiza, where you could use a block under your seat to help with this position. And we'll be here for a minute or so, and we'll have the option to move into a saddle pose. So some of you, this is enough sensation to rest with the thighs feeling a stretch here. Some of you may be coming back onto the hands and some of you resting all the way back. So you can sit on between, uh, on between, in between your heels or on top of your heels. Either way works. As you come back over the legs, some of you have your bolsters that you like to rest over, or you're leaning back against a sofa or an ottoman or even a wall. All of these things are options. We're going for this stretch of the quads, the hip flexors, and also the uh, stimulation of the lower back. So this is where I stop here, but I can use a block. Maybe another one for the head. Or you're in between your feet. And it's really just an individual thing. One is not better than the other, whether you're between your feet or on top of them. This will cause more internal rotation if you're in between them. If you're on top of your feet, then you're gonna get more back bend and less internal rotation. Those of you who love the Golden Gate pose or the bridge with the block under the hips, that's a good alternative here as well. Listen to your knees. If your knees tell you that this pose or any variation of it are not good for you, then that's a sign that you should listen to. Resting for a little bit longer. And again, this is where you might be. Resting back against a sofa is a wonderful way to do this pose. And slowly release, make your way into child's pose. Resting in child's pose. And coming up, please, making your way onto your back for a spinal twist. On the back, both knees coming over to the right side to begin. So your version of spinal twist, I'll show you this knees on top of each other version, but any of the versions you're familiar with in the yin twisting realm, please go ahead and feel free to take those if you prefer. Left arm is reaching out to the left, maybe higher or lower, depending on your body and what feels good in your chest and shoulder and spine. Noticing where your breath goes in this shape. and release the twist on the first side, coming up to the center and slowly shifting over to the second side.
stay connected to your breath. And now release the pose, knees up to the center. Straighten your body out, straighten out your hips and shoulders, moving into your choice of happy baby pose or snail pose. So if you're gonna do the snail, then you wanna take any ponytail out like I'm doing. So happy baby pose, you can bend the knees and then reach down, hold the bottoms of the feet, hold the insides or the outsides of the feet whichever feels better. Wide knees, if it's not available to reach the feet, then you're gonna do this with wide knees like this and then work on bringing those knees in because we're working toward a spine stretch, the lower back, middle back, we wanna stretch. And if you're gonna get into the snail pose, maybe there's some more sensation in the upper back as well. So snail pose, you can start out with the legs quite far from the ground, it's really, not about how close the legs get to the ground. It's about this stretch of the spine. The hands can stay at the back the whole time, or you can start out here and then ease your way into something a little bit steeper. But keep in mind, we don't need to get the shoulders on the ground. We don't need to bring this stress as high up in the spine as possible. We can really play around with having it on all these different parts of the spine with this nice rounded yin approach to this pose. Some of you, the hands rest on the ground here. Others like to have the hands up above the head, maybe holding the feet, maybe not. Some of your feet will touch the ground and others like mine will not touch the ground, at least not on this day. A block, if you like to have something to just anchor yourself, a block can be there or a bolster or a wall. If you're in that happy baby pose, you can rock side to side if it feels good. And if you're in this snail pose, then slowly lower down and you can enjoy some of the middle back and lower back sensation on the way down. Support yourself at the back or on the backs of the legs as you like. And we're going to all make this slow release into a final Shavasana. Make yourself comfortable on your back. If you wish, take this yin version of Shavasana, the starfish pose with the arms and legs spread out. Any other thing you need to do to make yourself comfortable, a bolster under the knees or extra clothes or a blanket covering you, or maybe an eye pillow over your eyes. Taking this time to fully absorb and bask in the effects of this practice, yin and yang, mixing together. Notice the energy that's been created, generated, stimulated. And let the sensations that you're feeling in your body be like a magnet for the mind. Let the sensation of breathing be a magnet for your mind. The whole body relaxed. 
scanning over, noticing any place, any joint or limb where there might still be a little bit of tension and letting it go, whatever you notice. So the body can be completely spacious, heavy, welcoming this sense of ease. And I'll leave you here. You may wish to rest longer. Otherwise, make your way up, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Thanks so much for joining me. And please hit the thumbs up if you liked this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my latest yin yoga video.